Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for a special devlog today in which I'll be attempting to create a gamified productivity focused app with Godot 4 over the next two weeks as we approach the new year. Now this may sound like it's totally out of left field, but I am doing this for a couple of reasons. The most important of which is just giving myself a time boxed creative break from my usual work on Dauphin, which is of course my gigantic passion project RPG that I've been working on for years on this channel. On top of that, I just had what I thought would be a fun idea for an app that will be hopefully somewhat quick to make and might also help me with some of my resolutions to improve my time management in the new year. At the most basic level, this app will simply be a timer app focused on helping me implement the Pomodoro technique. And if you haven't heard of that technique before, it's a way to kind of structure your working sessions so that you have dedicated work periods followed by dedicated break periods. For example, 25 minutes of work, followed by a five minute break and then stringing those together across a much longer working session. If you watched my previous video where I talk about some habits that I wanna to introduce to my routine in the new year, you'll know that I'm looking to introduce this method to my morning development sessions to see if I can kind of improve how efficiently I spend my time. I don't know if this is actually gonna work out for me yet, but I do think it'll be a lot more fun if I can try to implement it using an app I've built. Now here's the kicker. Over the next two weeks for the Christmas holiday, we will be driving up and down the East Coast between Virginia and Maine to spend time with family. That's gonna play really nicely into the theme of my Pomodoro app, which will be taking a road trip. The idea here is that when you're in one of those working sessions, you are driving on the road, on the move towards your destination. And when it's time for one of those quick breaks, you're camping, relaxing, taking in the sights and sounds of wherever you stopped. With that said, I think the best way for me to describe my vision for the app is to show you the only progress I've made so far, which is this piece of artwork, which has taken me way too long to create. Hopefully, just from taking a glance at this, you can get an idea of how this will work. As the timer is running, this car, van, vehicle, whatever the player picks will be chugging along the road, and we'll see the scenic mountains, hills, trees in the background slowly scrolling in a parallax effect, giving the player the feel that they are just chugging along on their road trip. During the break period, we'll zoom in on the car here, maybe show the door open and a couple of camp items outside, just to relax for whatever duration of break the player has set. The future progression of this app will hopefully also be very straightforward. The more you use the app, the more you'll kind of level up and unlock more areas to drive through, new vehicles, new attachments for vehicles, just things to customize this kind of aesthetic experience that you have on your second screen while you're working. Of course, we'll have our challenges over this break, but no matter what, I'm excited to work on something new and charge myself up for a productive year ahead. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll be able to actually download this and try it out for yourself. In the meantime, I really need to go pack for this trip, which we start bright and early tomorrow, so we'll catch up soon. Good morning, y'all. We have made it to Maine after a 13-hour drive north yesterday. It's a crisp 18 Fahrenheit out this morning, but the wood-burning stove is running full blast, and as always, life in Maine couldn't be cozier. I'm planning to keep my updates a little more brief since I'm visiting family here, but much like at home, I typically have the early morning to myself, so I'm going to use that time to create my Godot project, import my artwork, and kick off development for this project, which I'm now nicknaming Range. Hey everyone, checking in about a day and a half into the trip here and I'm happy to say I've actually made a bunch of progress just leisurely working on this thing in the early morning and during some downtime. You can see I have my main app scene set up here with a bunch of stuff already set up underneath it and I've actually got some really nice organization down here in my project hierarchy for everything that I've been working on so far as well as stuff I want to add in the future. So let's take a quick look. So right off the bat, you'll notice that what I'm calling my main app scene is actually looking very empty here in the editor, despite having all of this stuff up here in the hierarchy. The reason for that is that instead of kind of statically placing all that artwork into the scene, I'm loading it dynamically when the app starts up. And the reason I'm doing that is so that in the future, I'll be able to load different vehicles and different backgrounds for you to drive through as you unlock more of that stuff just by using the app. The control flow of this overarching app class is actually very straightforward so far. Of course, we have our Godot built-in ready function, and in this function, I'm calling my custom initialize function, 
which does two things. It loads the vehicle and it loads the campsite. And to show you what happens here, I'm just gonna go ahead and run the game. And we'll see that we load into a very static looking campsite here. The idea here is that the campsite will be the first thing you see when you start up the app. And this will be the place where you select the length of time for your first Pomodoro or working session. Once you've set that time, you can begin that working session by pressing play. What this will do in the future is transition us to the driving scene where we'll be further zoomed out, see the mountains kind of moving in a parallax fashion in the background and the vehicle traveling along the road. Right now, all this button does is add some exhaust to the vehicle. From a functionality standpoint, that's about all I've achieved so far, but I wanna show you my Notion board here so you can see how I've tried to lay out the rest of this in at least very broad strokes for the rest of these two weeks here. So far, I've created my initial project in the basic parallax scene, which I haven't really spent much time in yet. And right now I'm working on that camp and time selection scene that we just looked at. Next up, I want to actually complete the selection of that time window and transition to the driving scene. And at that point, it's kind of a natural flow for the timer to end and transition back to the camp, reward the user with some kind of XP for how much time they just spent, and then enter the break state for that five or however minute break you want to take in between those working sessions. So up next, we'll be figuring out how to start that timer and make the vehicle hit the road. In the meantime, I need to go wrap some gifts and probably get involved in some baking activities. So we'll just catch up sometime soon. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm joining you again on December 26th, the day after Christmas. If you celebrate, I hope you had a wonderful holiday and managed to spend some great time with friends and family and relax. I certainly did, which is why progress is still moving quite slowly on range. Now with that said, at the expense of adding any kind of polish to anything I've been working on over the past few days, I have managed to throw together the most basic functionality behind Range's very simple game loop. So to show you that, we'll go ahead and run the app here, and you'll see that we land immediately on what I'm calling the campsite screen where the car is just kind of hanging out in the scene and not moving. This is where we'll choose the amount of time we want for that working session using the plus and minus buttons here. I actually have this hard coded for just five seconds or 10 seconds I think right now for debug purposes. So I'll leave this as is and I'll press play to begin the working session. When I press play, you'll see that we transition to what I'm calling the landscape scene where the car drives into view and we have this nice parallax view of the mountains in the background. When we have five seconds left on our timer, the car will exit the screen on the right side and will transition back to the campsite. The idea at this point and what I need to work on next is returning back to that campsite scene but in a different state. Instead of selecting the amount of time we wanna work for another working session, we need to have a time set for that five or 10 minute break. And right once we get to this scene and kind of the break state, I want to reward the user with some kind of XP for that working session that they just completed. And while I have you here for this update, I do think it's important to share that I have abandoned my single app scene approach to managing all of the logic in range. I thought it would be great and easy to have a single kind of parent app that managed child campsite and landscape scenes. But it turns out, as you can see here, that there's just a lot of important logic in each campsite and in each landscape, and that could kind of conflict if these were both in the scene tree at the same time. So now what I use is a situation that's very similar to what I have in Dauphin, basically a scene manager class that I can easily use to change between scenes, in this case with a nice little transition canvas. So that is today's update. With a little less than a week left in the project, I'm actually very happy to have the basics working and be able to focus on just polishing things up over the next few days. I know that at the end of this, the app will still be very basic, but I do think it'll actually be usable and I'm hoping I can share it with y'all. Tomorrow we have the long drive back to Virginia, so I'm looking forward to a relaxing evening with the family and being closer to home tomorrow. Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to what is hopefully a familiar looking setting. After a grueling 15 hour drive yesterday, I'm happy to say we've made it back to Virginia and have enjoyed a much needed night in our own bed. Today is now December 28th. I woke up, enjoyed a very recharging taste of my normal morning routine, and now we're gearing up to go visit more family, this time just a few hours away here in Virginia for a couple days. 
I'm looking forward to some more chill time working on range, but I think for this part of the trip, I'll probably hold off on recording any updates just because it's a bit much to try and find time to sneak off and do that. That said, I do think I'm approaching the finish line as I spent some good time yesterday in the passenger seat knocking out some more functionality. So before we hop back in the car, let's take a look. All the improvements that I managed on the drive yesterday happened to take place on the campsite screen. So we'll go ahead and power through my hard-coded 10 second working session here. And when we land on the campsite screen, you'll see a few changes have been made both to the experience bar and to some of the UI that's presented to the user. So first off, you can see at the bottom here that we are rewarded experience based on the amount of time that we spent during that working session. And again, I've kind of hard coded this for 10 seconds right now just to show you how this progress bar works. But the idea here is that the more time you spend using this tool, you will see this bar go up and each time you increase your level, ideally you'll unlock just some little visual thing that you can attach to the car here or visualize as part of your camp scene after a working session. You'll also notice that we now have a bit more going on with the brake timer UI up here at the top. We can now use the plus and minus buttons to add and subtract time from the break that we're about to take. And of course we can click our coffee button here to actually start this break. Where I need to focus my attention next is what happens when this timer ends. We basically need to reset back to the app's first state where we're ready to start a new working session. And in fact, I think I can clean this up a little bit more as it is right now. I should probably dismiss some of this UI when the break is actually underway just to be less distracting. As you can see, we're quite close to actually closing the loop of our core functionality here. Once I get that done, I plan to focus my attention on polish, namely around the vehicle itself. I'd like to make it bounce a bit while it's driving, actually have the wheels rotate while it's driving, and maybe set up the foundation for attaching visual elements to it. That'll be my task during the last part of my Christmas break here. The laptop is coming with, but the camera will stay at home this time, so I'll look forward to joining you for one last update here in a few days. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is now January 3rd. Just wrapped up a wonderful visit with family here in Virginia and a super fun New Year's Eve party, but I would be lying if I said it wasn't great to be home after a very busy holiday and settled back into my routine. I'm happy to share that although I did not complete every piece of functionality I ideally wanted to build for range over the course of this challenge, I did end these two weeks with what I think is a decent candidate for a minimum viable product that satisfies the main intentions of the app. So without any further ado, let's take a look. So jumping right in, there's not a lot that's going to look hugely different, but I have made some small visual tweaks as we progress throughout the basic app loop. So to show you that, we'll go ahead and jump into our first working session here. And hopefully you'll notice the wheels are now spinning. The car will kind of bounce a little bit once it settles in to its main trajectory here. And I've actually improved the acceleration a little bit so it looks less jarring as the vehicle enters and exits the scene. The campsite scene here is where I really wish I had had more time to kind of flesh things out. I would have loved to have had the door of the van open, maybe some type of tent or camping stuff hanging out around here, but I just didn't have time to build all that out. When the break actually completes, and you'll see we finally dismiss some of this UI here, we just revert straight back to the app's beginning state where we're ready to kick off another working session. I think, frankly, this is pretty unclear what happens during this transition, so in the future I'd love to have some kind of better way to transition back to the initial state. Maybe the most important improvement I made over the last part of my holiday here was implementing a save system, which you can see I've built into my game manager class with a simple save and load game function. If we jump into the save game resource itself, we can see what we're saving. The current XP of the user, which of course they accumulate by completing working sessions, their actively selected stage and vehicle, and their most recent preferences for duration of their working time and break time. This save game resource is now being used throughout the actual game logic to load things like that active vehicle and the landscape that the player wants to drive through. What this means is that when I eventually create more vehicles and more landscapes, I'll have the support baked right into the app to let the player choose between those and save their preferences. With all that said, here is the final state of the Notion board. As you can see, I knocked out pretty much all the initial tasks that I had set up for myself for this project, which I'm really happy about. But in the backlog are some things that I think would be so valuable to the app. Like I mentioned, those campsite improvements, customizations for the vehicle, and entirely new vehicles and new landscapes for the player to unlock. Right now, as the player levels up, it doesn't really mean anything, and that's something I wish I'd had time to build out. 
So, the year is now 2024. My time limit for this challenge has expired and it's time to take a step back and reflect on these past two weeks and what I've built. At the beginning of this video, I said that the purpose of this challenge was to give myself a time boxed creative break from the project that I typically work on week to week and have been working on for three plus years at this point with the hopes that I could come back in the new year feeling supercharged and ultra motivated to jump back in. Now this will probably sound like I'm just saying this for the video, but truthfully, I do believe this challenge was a total success in this regard. About five days into my trip to Maine, actually, I strongly considered scrapping this video and the range project entirely because I wanted to get back to work on Dauphin. I think it was so quickly just starting with a brand new project with a fresh slate and some new ideas immediately made me think about what I could take back to my previous project and clean up and improve, and that totally has me charged up now. And of course I mentioned feeling a little disappointed that I didn't get to some of the arguably cooler things that I could have built for range, like different vehicles and landscapes and vehicle customizations, but at the end of the day that wasn't really the point of this project, and in fact I'm quite proud that I was able to build something with a complete game loop, if you'd call it that, in two weeks or less. Needless to say, I feel great about wrapping up this challenge and development of range for now. As I work on this video, I'll also work to get something uploaded to itch.io so that you can try range, at least in your browser. I'll leave the link down below. As always, I want to give a big shout out to the folks who support this channel and development of my various projects on Patreon. At the Grammy level, those folks are Jess Sargo, Samuel SVD, and Kyle Van Riper. I hope y'all had a wonderful holiday and enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm excited to join you again soon for some more progress on Dauphin, so keep your eyes peeled. Until then, be well and I'll see you soon.